So this is the team that I cheesed the entire demo with on expert mode, including the final boss, as well as all of the high level things outside of the level 40 missions, which I don't even think you can attempt. And essentially all I would do is send this team in to just go kill the boss. And typically what I would do is literally something like this. I would like run in like so. And then who needs barricades, right? We don't care about barricades. We're going to do the Valor, Valor skill and get right through these. I'd basically just do this every time. Do this. Just wild rush. Often killing the things I'm wild rushing through. And we'll start wasting these enemies. Let's, let's show what the team can do. So what does this team do? So we have a thief, a lord, a cleric, and a knight. I'll just, I'll just let the, the, the battle play out and you'll see. So the thief can throw poison on things. He can also pull passive points off of enemies. I have magic attack for anti-armor. We have assaulting lance for last hitting and chain attacking. So he just keeps chaining. We have a tank. If the thief were to get hit, the Lord blocks for the thief. So any thief weakness is negated by the Lord. Uh, we have quick heal, we have status removal, active heal is always set to be used on him so that he gets extra pass or, uh, active points so that he can keep attacking. And typically between all of these attacks, we just kill everything. And you can switch weapons as needed, you can run like keen lance as needed to hit like ev evasive enemies. Uh, you can switch to magic things to hit magic enemies, or hit uh, defensive enemies. And we basically just rush down bosses. Oh, it's trying to get me to move. All right, now let's see. Do I kill the boss? I do one round the boss, <laughs> who's also my level too, by the way. So it's not like through a, a heal assist as well. So we'll just waste this team. So we'll show it again. I know some people are doubting Cleric, but Cleric can remove debuffs, which is really useful in fighting shamans in the higher level area. It can also heal while restoring active points using a specific weapon. And I'll show the builds in a second. But between the magic, so I actually use a magic runic sword on my main lord, on Elaine, so that he can actually penetrate armors, so that Clive can pop off, and then the poison can help, and the thief on the front basically just acts as like a shutdown of basic melee attacks. So we have melee attack shutdown, we have range attack shutdown through Elaine, we have huge damage through Clive, and we have really good support and what I think of as recursion, which is I'm pretty sure it's a coding thing, but bit, the, the definition of it is when something repeats. It's almost like looping. I guess looping is a better term, like for like coding, if we were to ever think of it in terms of coding. So basically you like attack loop. Yeah, so here's, let's look at, let's beat this, then we'll look at it. But this is this team with this exact tactic, you can just completely wreck every map. You just literally, rush through whatever obstacles are in the way and dive the pots. <laughs> and it's extremely effective. And I know what you're thinking, what about stamina? You just spam smoked nuts. It's really that simple. You just spam smoked nuts and what are they gonna do? You just keep, you have 10 item uses, smoked nuts give you one action back, it's usually enough. And also, if you can't get the kill, uh, I'll go over some tactics for it briefly. But yeah, look at this damage output. Clive is max uh, strength stat booster the duo of strength or whatever he has he has five of those used on him he's his weapons change based on what the enemies do and his tactics change situationally sometimes i open like his first move will be like true thrust to get rid of thieves and griffins uh sometimes it will be the uh bull rush attack or whatever it's called that you like stun and hit the lane to stop enemy backliners while killing them yeah, look at this. This is so stupid. <laughs> it's so good, dude. Seems we've done it. So we just took on several combats. Two combats plus the boss. Didn't even need to heal in between. Easy victory. I think the demo's about to run out, so hopefully that doesn't happen. I think it will, but I can reload the save. I saved right before this. So I have one minute of playtime left. We're playing, we're running against the clock here. But this team plus the rush, I didn't even need to deploy anything. I just literally just beat this with one unit. Re very quickly, too. This is faster than you can beat this with Griffin.
All right, so here's what you do. You create a bunch of save files at different points in time so you can test things. This is how we have to play the game until it actually comes out. I'll show you all the items. You, now you have to do a lot to get to this point, right? You can't just like, you start running, like you can run these units, you'll get a great result, but to beat these higher level areas, you're gonna need specific items and specific setups and builds. All right, so let's go over them. This team also handles the final boss easily because of the thief. All right. Okay, so Clive, Templar Spear, Battler Shield, uh, Carnelian, Carnelian Pendant. So what do these all do? So this just has high might. Uh, this actually gives damage. So physical attack plus two. That's really all you want. He shouldn't be tanking anyways. And Elaine can always tank on him like Elaine can tank for him. And then Carnelian Pendant gives him AP plus one. Now Templar Spear is just damage. You can switch it to Unwavering for True Thrust, which is useful for killing thieves and griffins. You can use Phantom Knight Spear for dealing with armors if those are still a big problem. And then of course you can always switch to Runic Spear, which is pretty similar uh, to Phantom Attack. So let's actually check that out. So Phantom Attack is 1.2 times damage, so 20% more damage. Runic Spear is 1.5, so Runic Spear does hit harder. Uh, and is more common. You get this from the Witch Outpost. Unwavering you get from the starting dock area. Templars you get from the Angel. Uh, Battler Shield you get from the Island. You have to return after you fix the dock and take the boat back near where the chicken guy hands you a quest. So there's, that's where you get that. And then for actions, I don't really have these set to anything. It's something I put on lowest. And then situationally I'll add Wild Rush and then Keen Thrust to poke evasive enemies or to stun backliners that are a problem. So for example, if I use assaulting, I'm sorry, if I use um, if I use wild rush, typically what I'll do is I'll set it to first action and then a column, full column. So that way, and then what you also wanna do is position him on the left, like the left or the right, or the, the bottom or the top, based on which column you want him to attack, and he'll just attack whichever column is closest. That's typically what I do for that. If there's like some troublesome backliners, like shamans or something, that just kind of mess you up. However, uh, with her, she has a debuff removal, refresh. Now you can set refresh so that that's the first thing if you're fighting shamans, because shamans just hit your damage so hard, and typically that's bigger value. So she does a few things. She quick heals, which keeps your team up. Uh, she can refresh, which removes critical debuffs that can ruin your team. So when you're fighting like specific shaman teams where there's like two shamans, they'll just keep debuffing your attackers and you just and their initiative is so high that those units just get ruined. But with refresh, uh, it hits a row of allies. And you can also set the conditions. So I think that if like two dudes are debuffed in a row, you can cleanse them instead of having it just use it immediately. Uh, but she's running lyrical wand which i can't remember where i get it from it's in the stream that i recently just did the demo stream it's like eight hours long uh, but i got this this is crazy it costs two active points but it gives another unit an active point and, it, and right now it's on prioritized cab so if clive is damaged he'll get healed but he'll also get an extra action point regardless and she'll always use this on him and then of course she has two active points two passive points and situationally, you can switch active heal off for heal, but this team is so aggressive, it tends to be able to just rush down uh, enemy bosses. And if you want to like spot heal, you can choose items. And for Elaine, you situationally will be on Cav Slayer if it's valuable. He'll situationally be on Magic Attack if it's valuable, and he will situationally be on Lean Edge if it's valuable. And for Noble Guard, he is going for physically attacked, not debuffed. He could, he could be on physically attack. Uh, this was because I was running a different shield at one point, so you could probably remove this condition. Because Luminous Cover doesn't care. And this just is like a catch-all. So this blocks for physically attacked, because if he's at 50% HP or less, he will gain an extra passive point, which allows him to keep tanking. So him being at half health is actually a good thing at times. And then he can keep tanking and it's really stupid and then luminous is just like a catch-all for blocking any attack and he's tankier than you know most of these things and i also did uh dump hp boosts into him so and then for other things for the shield 
He just has this for more uh, passive points. You can also switch this out for Holy Knight Shield, which gives him this. This also prevents debuffs and blocks the physical attack. But I find that most debuffs come from magic. So kind of situational. Maybe later on it's better. Uh, this one... This is actually interesting. Activates before being hit by physical block attack. Uh, becomes heavy guard and grants the user plus one passive point if the enemy is flying. So this is a great utility shield for if you're fighting griffins because they specifically deal higher damage to Clive and they try to back lane nuke. But this can nullify the attack, which is very nice. And he can just keep getting passive points off of it. So some of these shields are pretty crazy. And then this activates after allies hit to share HP with ally. I haven't tried this shield, but it could have potential to be useful in this team comp. And he's also on Carnelian Pendant, so he has two attacks. All right, and then we went over hers. The Lyrical Wand, Lapis Pendant. And then for, for the Chloe Charm, it can be whatever you want. It could be Golden Egg, so you get more gold. Honestly, gold is not a problem in this playthrough right now. I think I have like 70k or something after buying like buying all the things I want. And then for the Thief, uh, we just simply run Silken Scarf, Lucky Coin, gets him some crit, gets him Insane Avoid. Most things cannot hit him. Uh, between Evade and then being blocked, he's virtually unkillable <laughs> by anything. And then for weapons, Hallowed Blade is good just because it has Might. Uh, heal plus 10% using Active Skill, Max HP plus 5. This gives him a little bit more bulk and also gives him a little bit of chip healing if he's damaged from like a ranged assist or something or a magic assist. So it also just helps him stay alive. Uh, Crimson EP gives him more initiative, which he does not need because he's already so fast, but has the same damage and also has active shatter, which can be used. The thing that's nice about him, about Travis in this team comp, is he can run this to pull action points off. He can run uh, the steel, the passive steel, to pull passive points off. So he's like a, this amazing debuffer. He can also run Viper's Fang because his initiative is so high, he'll poison whoever he, like the poison will go through damage wise. So he can poison to help with armors. He can remove attacking things. He can remove uh, defensive things. Now between poison, like toxic throw and poison slash, let's actually look at that. I haven't evaluated that yet. Toxic throw. So toxic throw has less damage, but it hits twice. So it should apply poison twice. And poison, I believe is 20% of enemies max HP. So Toxic Throw seems to be his best move in most combats when it, when I go into evaluation. Passive Steel is situationally useful and fantastic against the boss, the uh, first boss, because it just drains most of his annoying things, and then you just start smacking him, and then he dies eventually. He'll put you at 1 HP, but then he can't hit the Thief. So as long as the two minions are dead for the final boss fight, he just keeps draining the boss's passive points, which more or less shuts him down, and then the rest of the team just damages him. All right, and then for items, so before going into battle, here is what you should generally do. Uh, all right, so smoked nuts are one of the major items for this build. Restoring stamina on the spot is hugely useful because you're basically just going to be burning your three starting valor points for deploying the one super unit and then just diving. And in most maps, you're so fast that you can just get away with this. Now... This just allows you to continue fighting if you're out of stamina. So that's the main use of this. Uh, and then healing font is incredibly useful for just like party healing. And then revival orb in case something dies to like crits from magic assist spam. There were bosses where there was like five magic assists. And then one of my units died on the way there. And then I just revived at healing font. And then we just killed the boss. Uh, so there's that. Empowering draught is really good for boosting your damage. Defensive draught is good for tanking. Very often, these can be the difference maker. They're quite cheap, too. Uh, the tail feathers, there's the yellow one and the white one. The white one is single use, like it just uses it on you. The yellow one is AoE. And as far as I can tell, I haven't found too many shops that sell these, but if you use one of these on yourself and then you rush a boss, you can cover absurd distances, especially when routing through trees. And by routing, I mean like moving through trees. And you can get to the boss before they can get to your base and then just drop them like nothing. So these tail feathers can be quite useful for diving bosses. Then of course, healing tonic to spot heal and do of strength. I'm probably gonna start strength dumping uh, Travis. So you only can use up to four of each tonic on a unit. So you wanna use them wisely. And in the case of Elaine, he actually uses magic. So he would want magic tonics, uh, but that is the team. It dominates 
It just it literally beats maps in like a minute. Very easily. Like a minute in real time, not a minute in like game time. So like a minute or two. Uh, depending on the map, you can be more or less aggressive. You can also have like a base guardian just chilling out. The, she was originally on this team, Chloe, doing this, which isn't bad. It's not bad, but the other things are just better. <laughs> the other things are just so much better. Uh, I have a secondary team that just holds bases of this team if I need to deploy it for certain bases. And then I have this team for magic assists. Uh, I could expand this if I want to add another mage for more magic damage because it does scale based on the number of mages you have apparently. And I could probably remove this. So it's just a pure magic, <laughs> magic, magic utility. Uh, but this is the team. Pretty, pretty overpowered. Cleric is good. You've heard it here first, probably. And it's it's good for a few reasons. It heals you. It removes debuffs. It also can restore active points, which is something I don't think very many other units can do, especially in the early game. I don't think anything else can do that. Maybe there is one more thing, uh, but refresh, refresh, active heal, and quick heal are very good. And then lifesaver, uh, self heal for minor HP recovery. Grants the user. This is also neat, being able to restore, being able to uh, survive a lethal blow. That's pretty valuable, actually. That's the difference between winning a fight or not. So that's like hold out and fire. <laughs> Avia, let me know if you have a, a team similar to this. I'm always curious to see what people are running. Definitely like and subscribe for more content. Peace.